This video contains solutions to sample problems from section 4.1, where we talk about an introduction to differential equations. So all of the differential equations that we're going to be talking about in this video have this form that we see here, where we have the derivative of our function y is a function totally in terms of x. There are more general kinds of differential equations that we could get into learning how to solve, but these are the only ones that we're going to be talking about in this video. So since we know what the derivative of y is, all we have to do to figure out the original function y itself is to take an antiderivative. So we're just going to take the antiderivative of 3x plus e to the x. Antiderivative of 3x is 3 halves x squared. Antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then we have a plus c because we took an antiderivative. Now that plus c, because it could be anything, that's why we talk about this being the general solution. All those different values of c give us different functions that all are solutions to this differential equation. So here we have another example. This time our independent variable is called t rather than x, but that shouldn't throw us off too much. We're going to approach this the same way. So our function y is going to be the antiderivative of 2t square root of t squared plus 16, and we're going to take that antiderivative with respect to t. This integral is a little bit more complicated because we have to do a substitution, u equals t squared plus 16, du equals 2t dt, but we have a 2t right there, so this is pretty straightforward. This just gives us the antiderivative of square root of u du. U, it, square root of u is u to the 1 half, so the antiderivative is going to be u to the 3 halves multiplied by 2 thirds plus c. Now we don't want to give that as our solution because the original variable was t, so we would write this as 2 thirds times t squared plus 16 raised to the 3 halves plus c, and that's our solution. One more of these, and then we'll move on to another type of problem. So again, we're just taking the antiderivative here. So y is the antiderivative of 5 plus 3 over x. Antiderivative of 5 is 5x. Antiderivative of 3 over x is 3 times the natural log of the opposite value of x, plus c, of course, and that's our solution. All right, now we're going to talk about initial value problems. So an initial value problem is a differential equation together with one or more initial values. So the way we're going to solve this kind of problem is by first finding the general solution to our differential equation and then using the given value to find the value or values of the constants that we get. So in this case, we have dy dt equals 2t. Remember, dy dt just means y prime here. So y prime equals 2t and y is then going to be t squared plus c. So this value here, y of 2 equals 5, that's the initial value. That's why this is called an initial value problem. And it's that initial value that we're now going to use to figure out the mysterious value of c. What this means is when t equals 2, y equals 5. That's how we interpret y of 2 equals 5 there. So y is 5 when t is 2. That's going to tell me 5 equals 4 plus c. And that's going to mean that c equals 1. And so our solution to our initial value problem is not a family of functions this time, but just one single function that not only solves the differential equation, but also satisfies the initial value. All right, another problem along the same line. Here we get dy dt equals e to the 4t. So y is going to be the antiderivative of e to the 4t with respect to t. We're going to have to substitute u equals 4t. That's going to end up giving us 1 fourth e to the 4t plus c. Now we plug in the initial value. That means that I have t equals 0 and y equals 10 here. So this is going to tell me that 10 equals 1 fourth e to the 4 times 0 plus c. e to the 0 is 1, so that's 10 equals 1 fourth plus c which means that c equals 39 over 4. And so our actual solution to our initial value problem is 1 fourth e to the 4t plus 39 over 4. Now finally, we're going to work on a couple of application problems involving movement due to gravity. So the thing that we need to keep in mind here, which isn't explicitly given in this problem, but is that the acceleration due to gravity with metric units, we're looking at meters per second here. So our metric units is that our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we're asked about velocity here. So what we also need to keep in mind is that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So A is V prime here, which means V is going to be the antiderivative of A, which is negative 9.8 T plus C. And when they tell us that the initial velocity is 25 meters per second, what they mean is that v of 0 equals 25. This is an initial value problem. 
We just have to figure out what the initial values are based on the words in the problem. So because we know that v of 0 equals 25, that means that 25, put that in for v, put 0 in for t, that's going to tell us that c equals 25. So our velocity function is negative 9.8 t plus 25. And so now the question is, what is the velocity after 2 seconds? That will be v of 2, which is negative 9.8 times 2 plus 25 which works out to be 5.4 meters per second. We're also asked, how high is the ball above the point that it was thrown at this time? Well, that's position. And since position, the derivative of position is velocity, that means that my position function, s of t, is going to be the antiderivative of velocity, which will be negative 4.9 t squared plus 25t plus some other constant. Now I've already used the letter c here, so just to avoid confusion, I'll call this new constant d. So now the question is not exactly how high the ball is, but how high the ball is above the point that it was thrown. So it was thrown at time zero, so we're really looking for the difference s of two minus s of zero. And you might think that we can't figure this out because we don't know the value of d, but you'll see in a second that we actually don't need to figure out what d is because s of 2 is going to be negative 4.9 times 2 squared plus 25 times 2 plus this mysterious d minus what we get when we plug in 0, which will be 4.9 times 0 squared plus 25 times 0 plus d. But that second set of parentheses, that's a 0 and that's a 0. And when I subtract d, this d will cancel with that d. So in fact, I just get an expression that has no d's in it at all, which in this case is 30.4 meters. So the things we need to keep in mind when looking at these kinds of uh, gravity motion problems is that the derivative of velocity is acceleration and the derivative of position is velocity. All right, let's do these ideas one more time with this final question. A rock is dropped off a cliff that is 100 meters above the ocean below. How long will it take the rock to hit the water? So because this is movement due to gravity, we're always going to be using a equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What about our initial values? So here we have our person dropping this rock, splashing down into the water below. And so what we know is that because the drop, uh, because the rock was just dropped, it wasn't thrown, it wasn't tossed up and then fell back down. What we know is that the initial velocity is zero. It was just let go and then started to fall because of gravity. But we also know that the initial position, the initial height of the rock is 100 because that's where the rock was at the time that it was dropped. And those initial values are going to help me figure out my velocity and then my position functions. So v is the antiderivative of acceleration. So the antiderivative of negative 9.8 with respect to t is negative 9.8 t plus c. And the fact that v of 0 equals 0 is going to tell me that v is just negative 9.8 t. And then the position is the antiderivative of velocity. So the antiderivative of negative 9.8 t will be negative 4.9 t squared plus a different constant d. And the fact that s of 0 equals 100, if I plug in 0 for t and set that equal to 100, that's going to tell me that d equals 100. And so that means that my position function is negative 4.9 t squared plus 100. Now, how does this help me answer the question? The question is, how long will it take the rock to hit the water? Well, the top of this is where position equals 100, that's where we started, and the water level, that's where position equals zero. So what we're really being asked is, when will the position be zero? So we wanna set this position equal to zero and solve. We'll subtract 100 from both sides. That's minus 100. Divide both sides by negative 4.9, the negatives will divide out, so I get 100 over 4.9. Take the square root of both sides, and what I'll get is t is approximately 4.52 seconds. So these uh, principles, this idea that acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, that velocity is the antiderivative of that acceleration, and that position is the antiderivative of velocity, these ideas can be combined together to answer all sorts of questions involving motion and objects moving in gravity.